So last episode, everything was going great with the AC Hotel sign build until Steve dropped a little surprise on me. So this cabinet is 120 inches long. Yeah. On this side, actually 120 wide. Right. And the doors are 120 on the booth, so we can't slide it through the door. This is not going to fit in our booth. Not straight through it. Because of, just because it of the. It has to go in there this way. It has to roll nope. in there. But that's how I have to paint it. All right, let's go take a look at this booth. Okay. Does this feel like Camping World 2.0? So with the AC Hotel's job, you know, these are really big signs, but of course, Steve yet again built a sign that was too big to fit through the doors. Even in our new large facility, our paint booth doors are still restricted to how big we can go. So we had to make these brackets that will uh, essentially turn into a cart for us to be able to wheel this in and out of the paint booth so that it can actually get painted. So my problem with this cabinet is this sign is 120 inches wide. The paint booth is 117. So we're going to have to jacket on its side, at which Robert's building steel racks so that we can turn the sign and slide it into the paint booth. So this is not going to be the, the camping world stadium where you're going to have to break something to make it fit, right? No, this will fit out the door. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, in typical Steve fashion, he has built a sign that doesn't fit through the door of the paint booth. So we have to lean it over. So I'm making a carriage that will be on wheels so we can roll the sign into the paint booth leaned over at an angle. We're gonna use this to transport it on the trailer also because on the trailer it's over legal height and if you lay it down, you're over with, we'd have to pay for a permit. But by leaning it over on this rack, we're gonna take the rack out, bolt it to the trailer and then put the sign on at an angle on the trailer. The trick will be getting it onto this and then not just on, but then off, flipped and back on without messing up the paint. I don't really know how we're gonna do that. While Robert's building the carts, I need to finish up the last touches on my sign. So the skins are on, everything is ready to go to paint. I still have handy LEDs to put inside here. This will be a flex face on both sides. So still quite a bit of electrical to do after it comes out of paint. Yeah, we just have to get it there. So how are you feeling about this structure? It's good. It'll hold it for sure. How are you going to get this sign onto this rack? I have no idea. A crane, three forklifts, 30 people, I don't know. Seriously. Seriously, we're probably gonna do it by hand. The support structure to bolt this cabinet to the building is gonna require 14 foot tubes that are bolted to the inside perimeter of the parking garage. So we will pick this thing up vertical and move it really close to the building. And hopefully without any trouble, all three of these tubes will just glide straight in through these holes. So this is one of the three poles that go into 10 foot by 30 foot cabinet that suspends directly off the wall. Robert is welding all of this piece together. And this 43 inch plate requires another plate on the other side of the wall, almost four feet away. This pole is much heavier than the shorter poles from the other cabinet. This area has to be welded. Due to this radius, there's a lot of fill-in weld to go right here, at least a minimum of two passes to completely fill this galley, where this tube is never gonna move. That way, the three of those will support the weight of that cabinet. So now that Robert's finished welding the brackets, the next stop is the paint booth to have them coated with epoxy primer. So after suffering the initial two sawhorse casualties, we decided to put the brackets on top of the front forks rather than lifting it from the end with the forklift inside the tube. I mean, we do move pipes around like that with a fork inside with a piece of wood underneath. Yeah. It usually works. The pipe alone weighs about 500 pounds, and then the plate on the end weighs another 80 to 90 pounds. And apparently the painter's sawhorses 
just weren't up for it. It looks like when they first put it on the saw horses, they put it down and the plate hit it. That compromised, that put all that weight in a half inch wide area. But once this one failed, the other one failed. The ones that we have in fabrication are, you know, they'll hold 2,600 pounds on a pair of them. At least Renee gets new saw horses now, at least two of them. So I have this flange sticking out that's for the Panaflex cabinet. I can't lay that against the rack itself. So I purchased some two inch styrofoam, put three pieces together, which will be strong enough to keep this frame right here from getting crushed on my rack. Now I'm working on the new mounting system for the 5x30 cabinet. So originally this match plate was just going to be on the back side of the 8 inch tilt up wall bolted all the way through to my cabinet. Instead of doing it that way where all the weight is just on basically three square feet of that tilt up. So I'm now welding the match plates that would have been on the back of the concrete to these poles. These poles will also get a plate just like the other sign and they will get bolted through a 32 inch thick concrete structural column in the parking garage. So now Renee can paint these and they're ready for the boys to install. So the camera guys like to shoot welding because it has lots of cool white sparks that bounce everywhere. They like to shoot us grinding a piece of steel because then you have orange sparks all flying in the same direction. So as soon as they leave, that's when the excitement begins. So 15 minutes after the crew leaves, Robert lights his welding station on fire. So yeah, I didn't know. I thought it was safe because you weren't here. Um, he was just camping. It's three o'clock break. <laughs> Cooking a hot dog. The microwave's broke. You know, you have to, I have to clean metal before I weld it with acetone and degreasers and rubbing alcohol, all of which are very flammable. And sometimes the rags don't get far enough away. Or you think it's far enough away and a spark manages to bounce and ricochet off of two things and land on it. So that was the fire. So kind of tell me what's happening. <laughs> so Robert's doing the two-step. Yeah, explain to me what exactly happened. So here I am, here I'm welding. And oh, there was the there was the spark that lit it on fire. Oh, now I noticed it. I'm stepping on it. Still not going out. Now I'm putting everything down because now I feel like I actually have to do something. Still stepping on it, it's not going out. Oh, I decided to kick it. That was smart. Uh yep. Kick it across the shop. Yep, burn your feet. Stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> now we have two fires. That degreaser doesn't want to go out. It's still not out. Oh, now she was burning. <laughs> Cute little dance, though. Oh, here comes Steve. Steve came over with a uh, Windex bottle and sprayed it out. Stomping on it wasn't obviously working. So after watching their surveillance video, I have to wonder, is he Dutch? He makes a good plogger. This is the block and tackle that we're going to use to try to pick up that cabinet. My plan is to hook a strap to this, pull the cabinet over here, and pick it up right in the middle and get it on these two carts because it weighs about 2,600 pounds. So our plan for picking this cabinet is all of the people that we have in the shop, we're going to have to pick it up on one side, set it down on the floor or on the carts. I don't know which one we're going to use yet. The carts might roll out of the way and then a lot of manpower on one side, stand it all the way up on end. Where could this get squirrely? All over the place. The sawhorse could kick out, the bottom could kick out. You know, as soon as we start to lift it, the bottom could start to slide instead of trying to come up. So there's a couple moving parts that could go sideways. Yeah, this definitely is all hands on deck because the cabinet's 30 feet long. It wouldn't be so bad if it was a 10-foot cabinet, but this is three times what we normally do. You always know it's going to be an intense situation when Steve and Rob call everybody in the shop because they normally don't do that. They normally call just a few people, but this time they called everybody. What we're going to end up doing is setting the yep. sawhorses on the heaviest, strongest part of the structure so that it will tip on an angle Turn on those pieces. Yeah. So it's very critical that we put these sawhorses exactly where they need to be or it's just not going to work. Okay, other side. You think we can hold it on those carts? I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up off the floor. Hmm. 
All right, do we have enough two by fours to put three or four under here? What are you worried yeah. about? What's your problem? We're not going to be able to hold it when it goes on the, the rollers, the weight of it, even especially when we go to stand it up, it's just going to try and run away from us. And then we're all going to get smashed. I am deathly afraid that this cabinet is probably going to roll across the floor on those three horses where we still have it at a 45 degree angle and we won't be able to push it up. We'll just push it across the shop. So what's your solution? Drop it on wood, stand it up, pick it up with a forklift and put it on the carts in theory. Ready? Ready? Go. Ready? So the next tough part was us lowering it down onto the two by fours. Everybody needed to do it at the same time and watch your fingers. We're home. That wasn't that bad. I only felt strain in one ball. Not for the hard part. <laughs> Just the one. That's going to be heavy. I don't know if we get enough of this under it. Just wait, wait for everybody. Yep, yep, <laughs> we're ready to get ready. All right, you can move down a little. Ready? Go. Oh, yeah. Oh, Now it's getting heavy. I'm going into the hole. Now it's heavy. Awesome. The eagle has landed. There. So now that the cabinet's standing on the two by fours, we're going to have to get the forklift to pick up one end at a time, enough off of the floor to put a cart underneath it. And we need three carts. That's pretty close. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty close right there. What was that? Go, go. Yep. When I see it moving and start shaking, I thought it might flap on somebody's head, and I was like, wow. But when the song started rocking, Steve said it was okay. I almost took a shit on myself because if that thing falls, I'm the one who's gonna lose my job. I've already crushed two of Renee's horses, so who knows what could happen if this thing fell. It's 16 inches wide. I really didn't think it was gonna fall over. So everybody else was freaking out, but I thought it'd stand up just fine. Up some more. Up. Watch his cart right next to me. Whoa. Give it some gas. Give it gas. Uh, <laughs> great. Awesome. They're all going to move. They're all going to move because of the floor. Okay, head right straight toward the door. Okay, a little more. Around there -ish. Yep, right there is where that strap's going to go. The hardest part is going to be picking the cabinet up almost as level as possible and getting it on these two carts because it weighs about 2,600 pounds. So we're picking up the cabinet with the strap and it's not in the middle of the sign. So the sign starts leaning hard to one side and I needed ballast on that end. Lucky we had Robert. <laughs> so we needed a counterbalance. Me. Sit in there. Sit in that window. Yeah, right there. There you go. One chubby fat kid. He was just the right amount of weight. <laughs> I'm not going to say what that weight is, but it was the right amount. Hey, does that mean I get to ride this thing all the way to AC Hotel? Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Why are we going so high? Good, good. I got a plan for that. So that's a six inch lift over the top of five inch extrusion. There we go. Ready to go down? Yeah, do it. Do it. There we go. Now it's starting to lean. And that's, we're good. Keep going. Way there, and then he's, he's gonna have to move. Because we're gonna have to go right, under. Right, we're gonna have to push under it, right? Yep. He's off of it. The foam stripped out and is under there. That's why it's not touching this one. Let's shoot it out. Yeah, this is gonna be, that's the problem. It squirted it down. Probably have to do it with the forklift. 
pick just we'll just pick it up from this end yeah get both of those out just a little bit yep. it's not even touching this thing we spent all the time designing the rack i spent i don't know what three days welding the rack putting all the wood on getting it all together and it came down to the styrofoam screwing us and getting wedged underneath it and not sitting correctly my solution was just to come underneath the side of it and get, take the weight off of it with the forklift. That way we could get the piece out without getting our fingers crushed. I can't! Clear! Jeez. Just as he was moving forward, no brakes. The brakes went out on the forklift and I almost got spiked in the face. I've never seen him move that fast though. Oh, he is pretty nimble for an old guy. He is slightly dangerous. Okay, hold it. It's good. Okay. I mean, how did this feel to watch this happen? Whew. That was pretty crazy. I mean, you know, and technically there's nothing that could have happened. You know, I mean, it was all right. It's good. Uh, a little nervous about it, but now that we got it on there, we just got to kind of adjust it a little bit and uh, roll that thing in the booth and Renee will have at it. I think it might have been better if we just cut the spray booth out like we did the tour for the Camping World sign. We could have modified the spray booth easier than this, but by building this cage here, these cradles, it's gonna be the perfect way to transport it downtown as well. I, I think I might wanna go back and wrap some golf carts now. I don't, this is, this is stressful, but it looks good.